Welcome everyone to JSA TV and JSA podcast live streaming here at ITW 2024. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA, and I am thrilled and honored to be here with John Bruner, CEO of Aegis Mobile. John, welcome back to JSA TV. Well, thank you very much for having me today. It's a great honor to be here. Uh, thank you. I know ITW has uh, such a crazy agenda every every half hour, every hour you are booked. So thank you for providing us with some of your time and insight, making a little a little time for our JSA audience. We appreciate that. All right. So tomorrow you are on the speaking docket. You have a roundtable on a very important topic. We all need to hear a little bit more about digital identity. Can you tell us what critical topics that are going to be covered in that roundtable, perhaps? Sure. It's an interesting uh, roundtable in that it's uh, they're taking a different approach. It's going to be kind of uh, breaking into groups and having the groups come with their ideas as to oh. what they are facing in the digital identity space. Um, I can tell you that some of the challenges that are happening in the telecommunications industry around messaging and calling uh, are the ability to create known sender and known caller, especially at scale, because uh, in order to kind of protect all consumers, you need to be able to identify and show the consumer who's calling them or who is messaging them. Uh, and that, that, that really takes scale to make it work uh, for all businesses and industry. And what are some of the challenges for digital identity? How, how do you, how do, what do you hope to really explore with this roundtable opportunity? Well, what's interesting is uh, there's a big push towards branded messaging and branded calling. So what right. that means is that when you receive a call or you receive a text message, you're actually going to see the brand logo of the company calling you. Now, that means there's a lot of complexity, though, in terms of creating a structure that's secure, uh, that ensures that a phone number is not being spoofed and matched to a brand logo and then passed through as if they are you know, who they claim to be and they're not. Uh, so there's all kinds of architectures that are uh, being built and put into place that can control and ensure that the number calling is in fact owned and the rights to use are for that company and that the brand logo, there are rights to use that brand logo. And then therefore the consumer can not only see, you know, they can see who's coming at them and decide whether or not they should engage it. So complex and I am so glad Aegis Mobile is there to help us navigate through this. Let us talk a little bit about Aegis. What, uh, it's crazy, right? The mobile ecosystem so evolving. Where is your role in shaping the solutions for the future in the mobile ecosystem? Okay, well, thank you. So uh, Aegis has been in the compliance business for roughly 18 years now, uh, providing a number of services that are designed to protect consumers uh, on behalf of the telecommunications carriers. Uh, you know, For example, in the US, that's T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T. Uh, and what we, we have a number of services, but the first is that we do identity and verification of companies that they are who say they say they are. Secondly, we can do behavioral background checks of companies in seconds and provide risk scores wow. that determine whether or not they are going to likely attack consumers. Um, and we do this at scale. So today for the U.S. 10 DLC messaging channel, we receive four or five, six thousand companies every day. They get processed through our vetting platform to make sure that uh, they have no history of consumer harm uh, in their background. Other things we do though, is we get complaint data from customers for where we get the whole message, for example, that they receive that they say is spam. And we get millions of those and we're using AI tools to actually read those messages, determine if they're truly harmful. If they are truly harmful, we try to track them back to the registry to see if we can figure out who's behind it and how do we shut them down. And this is just two of a dozen different products that we have to work for the telecom industry to protect consumers. Unbelievable and so incredibly needed. The use of SMS messaging by brands really potentially leads to so much exploitation for spam, fraud, ex exceptional financial loss. I was just saying before we were rolling here, I was like, I recently fell for a scam and, yeah. and I feel horrible about it, but yeah. it, they're getting so professional now that yeah. even Someone who's been reporting on this on this activity for so long, you know, uh, we think we know better, but it's it's almost getting impossible to figure this out. How does Aegis help to mitigate these losses? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, I mentioned that we implemented is in partnership with a company called TCR is a registry uh, where thousands of brands come in every day saying that they want to be able to text message their customers. 
Uh, and so by you know having a registry, knowing the phone numbers that they're using, knowing the companies there, that they are who they say they are, and doing these background checks, plus getting all the complaint data in case they do turn bad after getting in, um, it really allows us to create an ecosystem that becomes much, much safer over time as you identify and weed out the bad actors. The other reason that vetting and verifying businesses up front at scale in a registry is important is that once you identify a bad actor, you can prevent them from coming back by taking all the data you have and doing a background check on them and moving it to a bad actor database. And every company that comes in and registers, we're looking for matches to those bad actors so that we can actually raise the flags and say, this company was harming consumers. Uh, we now see them re-registering with a new name and some new information, but we can tie this back to the company that was harming consumers and therefore they can't come back. So unfortunately it is an evolutionary process uh, and it's not just the vetting and identity up front that stops it. It's a whole process of compliance tools and companies that there are many companies providing great solutions, all of us working together in the ecosystem to identify these bad actors and then prevent them from coming back once we shut them down. That's brilliant. And it makes complete sense. You have to vet up front. And through the time, that database will grow and we'll know the bad actors. Smart. It's a long, scalable solution. I love that. It's no different than what any large company does for supply chain. Yeah. Right? As they bring on vendors to provide services, they want to know who they're dealing with. Smart. It's the Very same smart. thing. Very smart. Thank you so much, John. I know your time is so valuable and we are so appreciative of you sharing your insight here today for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV, live from ITW 2024. Happy networking.